All right, so we've come now to the last section of the mouth anatomy series here, or, or section of um, anatomy series. And uh, I want to do focus in on now studies of different lips in different positions. The labium superioris, or the upper lip, the labium inferioris, or, or the lower lip, and then break down these shapes with a little bit of teeth and a little bit of structure of the mouth around it. So I've got uh, Canson uh, paper, and I'm going to draw with the polychromos wax wax pencils, um, different, various different colors, and also add a little color to white uh, as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and pop up the uh, first image. And so what you notice here, you have a, kind of a beautiful lip structure, kind of probably a model. Um, and first thing we kind of want to get is to feel the ball around the lips a little bit. Let's see where we're at. So I'm going to draw that ball-like structure. You don't always have to draw it, but I just want to show it to you just very lightly. That's all I need right in through there. So we've got that feeling coming down now of the lips. I'll start to bring down where the bottom of the nose would be. And notice she's on an angle. So we'll put her on a slight angle, bottom of the, of the lip, the septal area in through there. Now we come down with the philtrum in through here. Philtrum here, philtrum here on the other side, that tubular, tubular structure that undercutting of the cylinder. Then we're going to get into beginning of the structure of the lip. So we see the prochelion, right, of the lip curved in through here. We feel that. We feel this coming around. She's a classic sort of three, two, three at the top, three forms at the top, and then two at the bottom. So we get to feel this coming down the slight, you can see the slight crease of her upper lip coming in. In the tissue folds, of the skin. Remember, less skin, more blood capillaries, right, um, to give a, a uniqueness to her lip. And she's got a little bit of a head right in through here that uh, gives it that kind of model, model look, kind of pouty look. Very, very uh, pillowy kind of lips. So we've got that. Then let's get the, the feeling of the lip coming across the ball feeling where they come back into the nodes in through here. You can feel this downward in through here. My uh, mouth slightly open a little bit. Through here, shorter on this side in perspective, coming across and into and around and through the node, over and through here. So we've got that tucking up here and over. And of course, this will tuck downward underneath. So I kind of have already that feeling down. Then the next step I, I generally try to go through, and these, these all vary depending upon the the feeling or the, the look of the, the lip. And through here, <clears throat> notice how this, this side of the lip, the left side, starts to really end and disappear and it gets into skin and gets to the node here. And so the red, the reddish color, the vermilion line kind of ends earlier right in through here, but this, the, this, the fold and uh, continues on until they touch really about there. Then we move over and through here. <clears throat> then around we get the feeling of that. You can straighten that out and get those curves in a moment. But you see how this arches a little bit through here, comes on downward <clears throat> and through here. And that's going to touch later, get a nice little contour where it touches, then back up and through. And you see how this arches around the ball. Remember we have a ball and a horseshoe shape, all the same kind of kind of uh, sensation of, of the uh, structure. So we'll come down here, we'll arch, starts to get thinner here, and start to emerge right in through, right in through there. So we have that going for us as well as we get that. Then we get a little space now. So we have the lower lip or the labium inferioris. We've got a little space between. How do you get that? Well, you just kind of eyeball that. So be smart about it. Be, be sensitive to is actually a better word. I'd be smart. We're all smart. Right in through here. And so I start to feel just this curve of that distance uh, between the two lips where, I, where, I, where they curve and turn. So here over to here and they really emerge into here so we'll get it slight slightly mouth open and what we're getting is is a little off off center of the incisors we can feel where 
they're located, this might be even too wide, we might even close it in just a little bit, change that the incisor will be pulled off the center of the prokelion here in perspective. Notice how it pulled off just a little bit there. It would get a little bit of that incisor here and that later on is just going to get it dark. Right through there and a little bit more of the incisor here, the center ladder, the uh, medial, and then we pick up further with the other medial incisor here. So a little bit more space between, of course, that disappears as we go as it goes across across the lip, across the mouth, and through there. Now we have the the uh, lower lip, classic two structure split, almost really just kind of one, but wider at the bottom, turning in through here, fuller, thicker in this area. <clears throat> Notice how this gets straighter in through here, and then we start to curve up a little bit, turning up and through. There's a nice tissuey, pillowy kind of structure with the lip right in through here. You notice that really sausagey, pillowy, sensual lip in through here. And then this gets a little straighter through here, then bubbles out, right? And then we get to her, really the center about right in through here in perspective. And you notice that the light is, is generally um, uh, kind of diffused and soft in through here. Then we get the lip structure coming back in through here. Now we can start to turn this underneath the node in through here. These structures come over. This comes underneath and still gathers here as we see that. Then we can curve, curve the structure almost like a block. See that underneath? We curve that, push that, contouring in through here. <clears throat> Up underneath and through here and then over and then back down and then finishing it out here this is what gets a little bit blockier here's the top of it right curving through and then around and then we have this extra little section here that we can can start to draw coming out pulling out this way through soften that up a little bit through here and then she comes on down, the lip comes on down and through here. Now, what we can do is we can put on the furrow. See the furrow here, right in through here where it straightens out a little bit underneath. It's pretty soft. We can see this through here. <clears throat> this can come down in shadow like so. And that gives us that nice harder line and then it softens just a little bit, just a little bit to the chin, right in through here. And that is the mental labial group. Just slightly tapered inside, indented inside a little bit. Then we get to the, the heading on the outside here and in through here. <clears throat> Beautiful lip structure. And then she starts to taper out to the jaw, the mandible here on the outside edge. So we come through. Nice and soft and then over and that's that's all we'll get to there. This will come begin to come over and still flatten further as we get more of a three-quarter a full kind of head and she'll come over kind of this way and through there. Now I can go back and, and tighten up some of these contour lines a little bit in through here. I won't go into full value <clears throat> through here just for time's sake. And we can curve and then start to shape these lips a little bit as they give you sort of a natural nice under curving. You notice that in the value you can contour the value this way softly. You see that right? But then there are also some contouring stronger lines you can get especially when you see skin tuck underneath a little bit like so. Now the philtrum You can start to see here as it curves softly in through here and you can see very gently the, the thickness of the philtrum as it divots and cuts into the canal, like a canal structure very lightly. So all that's really kind of in shadow, very softly. <clears throat> and this, this is divoted in, it means it dips in uh, slightly so it undercuts right a little bit more kind of nicely 
And so we get that sense of uh, turning underneath and you could feel like something could rest, water could rest in there. We don't necessarily know. I, in my research, I'll just put the bottom line with the nose, what the biological purpose is for that. So all this is toned. I'll just tone this in, strengthen this line in through here. See how this gets puckered in through here, the prokelion right in through here. It separates just a little bit further with the stronger line right in through there and then up. You can kind of feel that separating in through and you get that nice curve, very sausagey. One thing to know right, right past the vermilion line where, it's, where it starts to be red, there's what we call kind of a white liner where you get a little bit of a, a shadow value, uh, more than not necessarily a shadow, but a value switch from light where you get that highlight kind of right in through here. But all this lip, the point being, get, see how it gets turned downward, especially right, there's a creasing right in through here where I'm making this darker right into here. Do you see that? That gets creased downward and into the lip structure even further. And I'm not going to go too much further with value because I want to get on to about six of these for different looks and feels. And then the node turning. That's so important where that lip gathers. Now she's pretty young so she doesn't have a lot of too much folding so you don't want to overdo it. It's more soft value. The older we get the more these droop, unfortunately. So you have you have that to look forward to um, with uh, aches and pains over the years. Those of you that are a little bit older, you know what I'm talking about. You get it, but that's just the way it is. So we come underneath, we curve underneath, and I'll just put a little bit under here. Now remember teeth. Be careful about drawing teeth over drawing teeth. Okay, that's important not to do that. You know these are in shadow, so I'll push that back a little bit. I'll just emphasize again where the incisors uh, come together a little bit, two little rectangles, and in the cat, the uh, negative space of the incisor here to the other, and how that one's really buried back into the uh, structure of the mouth, hidden by shadow of the upper lip in the um, the orifice of the um, opening of the mouth. And this gets a little bit more turned down. Almost looks like the K9, but it can't be. In through here. So more shadow in through there. And you don't necessarily also have to go too terribly dark with the opening of the mouth because there is a, is a tooth over here to the side, believe it or not. Just a little bit darker there. So you just have to be careful with your values. And that takes some time just to get, get used to what's what's happening, what's happening over there. All right, so uh, that feels pretty good. And then lastly, this shelf of the, the upper, the lower lip, the labium inferioris, where these turn, these get a little bit darker in through here. This lip turns, we'll hit those, those uh, contour line marks. This turns, and see how this squares off in through here, this little shelf of the upper lip, right in through here is a little flatter and it's turning back into the mouth in through here. And then we get a lighter highlight right in through here. We have about two, two light sources and they're softer so you don't get that stronger lighting, which I like because it tells us more about the form. But nonetheless, through here, into labial group. And then I'll tone in a little bit here, right? Go a little bit darker. It ends up in through here where we can really push that darker value underneath where that's turning. This is turning, contouring right, contouring, contouring, almost straight, then contouring outward. You get that sausagey look, and then we'll go a little bit darker in through here. And we've got to soften that up. You have to soften those teeth up more than what you think. Push that back in the mouth a little bit, but you can't go too dark. It's a little subtle trick 
it takes a little time to, to get a hold of. And then we'll shelf this out a little bit and bring that up and through there. So the lips are, can be complex. And a little bit more of a crease, just slightly in through here. All right. Okay. And then we'll soften this a little bit over to the chin. Maybe just a little bit longer. Slightly square, just a little bit. Remember that's turned down. Okay, and I think you get the idea. All right, so I'll just throw a little bit of light on and through, maybe in through here, just to uh, give effect. Now I haven't gone full value, but that's okay. Just get a little bit of this turning underneath here, and then also right in through. <clears throat> down and that just contours quite nicely all right okay so there we go there's our first uh, study let's go on to our next next lip study so this one we'll take a look at the mouth structure we're three quarters we're looking up to the head now we're pretty close right you get whiskers of the the top on the maxilla there, you can tell he's opening his mouth, so you know those pulleys are pulling up the, uh, the, the cheeks a little bit. And so let's get a feel for that mouth there. Let's get a feel for the ball a little bit. The maxilla up and through here, right, and coming around or about underneath the furrow just to get a feel for a placement. You can use that ball for help to help it out a little bit. There we go. So we've got that feeling. Notice how light I'm drawing. That takes students a little while to get, get more comfortable with that real quick light lay in. Be careful not to go too heavy. All right, so let's get the gesture of the mouth. Let's be a little bit looser. So the nostril, the nose, I'm gonna put that, just locate that here to there. Look how curved that is along that ball. So that's where that is, under that undertow. Then we get to the philtrum, right, underneath. So this whole gesture comes up and over the ball undercuts because of the philtrum and through here. Then we get to the top of the lip at the end of the philtrum, right? And then the bottom of the, the labium superioris, about right here, pretty thin lips overall. And so we get this gesture, right, of this coming across, rolling around in the node roughly in through here-ish, right? So I say ish because i um, gesturing it out. And then notice this angle across, so I'm feeling that now that's straight, but then across the ball over and through here just to get that lip to come over. And it's going to pull in about right here, doesn't it? So we've got that working for us about right in through there. There's the, the other node area that we're working through. Then we're going to, I'm going to feel in the feeling of that lip right in through here. Not even worry about the, the philtrum yet. Just getting a feel for the gesture. Curving that gesture in, cutting in with that gesture around. Because here's the center, right? Here's the center of the of the philtrum, which is the center of the head for our center line. Then we're coming down, right? So we've got that undercutting. Now I'm feeling where the thickness of the teeth may fall in. The incisors, notice how squarish they are. They square out a little bit until we get to the canine, and then the canine. The canine really takes us back, doesn't it? It takes us back in this direction. So here and over, it's like a box because it's, we're getting into that horseshoe shape. So the other incisor is here, incisor to canine, altered over about roughly into there. So I kind of mark that canine to this canine right in there a little bit. So I can mark that and then this curves back to get way back into that horseshoe. And believe it or not, we're almost back into the wisdom teeth molars, right in through there to here, okay, and then this curve zone. We get some of the gum, but we get a lot of shadow because of that. So we have that, see that boxy kind of form in through there? Then we get, this is a complex little lip structure, right? Then we get, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down a little bit, the end of the molars roughly right in through here to here, okay, and then the lower lip, I'm gonna go ahead and just start to put on a little bit. 
right in through here, curving over. Just gesture that in. Now this gets complex. Look how it goes to the node in through here, tucks over, then come back, wraps on through, right? Then underneath, really gets, gets that curve as their mouth gets open in through here. So we're getting pulled up and we're getting pulled down from the dep depressor anguli uh, oris and also the mental labial group, which is hidden here. I'll, I'll kind of sketch in what I think it'll look like too as well. So we get this lip here coming up, heading out to the center of the bottom of the lip, then over curve. See, that's just a gesture of quality. And then we're going to get up to that kind of a smile up into here into where they come together at the nodal, node-like area, then over. So that gets pretty fun. And this gets the thickness of the lower lip a little thicker than the top here. This gets straightened out, and this is where it really wants to curve through, right? In through here. Pretty fun, maybe, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're really struggling. Then maybe it's not so fun. Hang in there, riding through. Okay, coming in through. There we go. So we get that, they get that structure. And then we turn a little bit. Now again, our cheek to make our node in through here comes on over. This is the orbicularis oris region. Remember that? Orbicularis oris. oris. <clears throat> coming over this way and then coming back down. Notice how it's more of an oval shape now because of the pulling in the expression. Then we have the furrow a little bit in through here. It kind of ends where the canines are. So we're looking, right, here are, let's make, make sure you can see that canines, canine here, here, and see how the furrow squares a little bit more and then really turns, turns back over, keep that in mind. <clears throat> so we can square here, square here, and then we can kind of curve down to the chin, which would be roughly right in through here, and then curve. I'm just gonna put just a slight curve here, and a slight curve here to start to show his jaw. I don't want to take up all my room for my uh, other drawings as well. Okay, so now I'm going to put the philtrum on here. Let's put the, the gesture of the philtrum. It's very subtle here. It's not a strong, strong divoted philtrum, uh, but it's, it happens roughly right in through here and also right in through here underneath the septal, septal part of the nose and through really takes off and uh, we get that further. All right, so let's kind of tighten this up a little bit, make this a little bit stronger. Let's pick apart uh, some of these uh, features. So we'll just, uh, we won't do value, we'll do mostly the line here for time's sake. All right, so now we're coming into the upper lip to the vermilion line where it gets redder, where the tissue changes to thinner skin, more blood capillaries, right? You've more unique shape. One million nerve endings, um, less sweat, well, really no sweat glands or oil glands. That's why we get chapped lips, believe it or not. So through here, very soft, subtle, subtle arching of the prokelion in through here. Kind of a two, probably slightly two, three, but I see almost this is one point. One, the prokelion's not very strong here because of the stretching as well. So we have that. Then we come across here to get that shape. Downward and coming over. Look how that cascades downward. This starts to get darker because of the, sh the shadowing and the cheekbone up here that starts to tuck over the orbicularis area. All right, so <clears throat> now we come on, come on through to the node region where this starts to tuck under. This gets more tucked and pulled. Right, we see that. We're just drawing what we see now and learning about the anatomy. And we just learning what the anatomy is doing, but we're drawing the skin in all the forms without the uh, strong anatomical pulleys and things underneath. <clears throat> all right, so we have that. Okay, Orbicularosaurus coming down, getting that. Let's get the bottom here of the labium superioris. Or it's coming through here where it's stretching and over curving, curving through and around. <clears throat> we get that shape through here. This is interesting because it's really tucked underneath. So you have to undercut, under curve a little bit. Be careful, don't over curve it. 
but you have to under curve it. So it's turning this way, not that way. This way, not what, so we have to under curve here to get that pillowy sausage look. And under curve here back to our center. And then there's our ridge where it's kind of like the crust, remember the crust of the nose? This is that ridge where this turns, our lip turns in this way, in this way. So we're curving, curving, curving. And we get this height into here, and then back down right there. All this again is curving, curving, like so. Then it gets stronger as it gets closer to the uh, turning inside to the mouth. Important to know. So here's our center right through our, our uh, filtrum, and this gets very, very soft. Matter of fact, lots of shadow up and through here, kind of an oval shape. This gets really soft nostril rough nostril and through there so we kind of you can see a little bit of a turn in through here but not a whole lot so it's a little bit a little bit softer filter a lot quite a bit actually <clears throat> so now we can curve over with this shape the the prokelion is very unpronounced very 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 thin and this arches a little bit, gets higher, but still stays lower than this straight line across. We'll tell you that horizontal vertical diagonal alignment. Then we come over and notice how the strong curve, and then it starts to dive in around the ball, the maxilla, and really come on in. Look how that comes on in pretty good there. So we come on in, we curve around. Let's do it over here. So we come on in under turn here, then we come on in. Right in through here is where I feel where the canine is, right in through there, along the edge, that's really turning right, right here. So there's your incisors, medial, lateral, and then right in through here, we're right in through here on the head, turning. It's important to note. In through here, then we're curving around with the lip, the labium superioris, right in through here, a little darker, right in through there. You can kind of mark that. A little bit and through there and then we're going to get very subtle under turning under turning under turning under turning right then we're feeling that node over here i'm going to place a little bit more of a dark to show where it really really they meet together right in through here right that's kind of what we're looking for where that's showing out together now see this lip upper lip then turns into as it under turns then it overturns here to get to the lower, lower lip. That's where all this kind of comes together, and that's why we call it a node. Where this cheek comes down, this could probably be a little arched. All that comes down and gathers right in through there. Pretty powerful, powerful stuff <clears throat> coming through. <clears throat> then we're gonna see now coming on this side, a little darker here. As this folds underneath, we have to think in three dimensions. Then this, the, uh, the skin starts to get turned and we get to the node in through here. This wants to continue on and then this wants to taper and soften. And later on, it's just going to meet down here to the other area of the orbicularis oris coming together. Remember the depressor anguli oris is over here. It's kind of off the, the photo. This, this chin is probably too short. Matter of fact, I'm going to soften it because I don't want it to get in the way too much. I probably will want to make that, would have wanted to make it longer, but I want to keep it out a little bit further. All right, so we come on down now to the rest of the node. This turns in, and now we're getting to the lower lip in through here. And I'm just, I've got the gesture of it, so I know where it's at. I'm going to turn this over. See how this turns? It cuts in. Shaves in a little bit, right in through here, and then cuts over. I'm going to wait for a moment because I want to put on my other structures. I want to put on the teeth, and I want to put on the, the tongue. The tongue is flipped up, and the frenulum is showing. And then you have the under teeth before I get to here because I, I might want to raise this up if I need to. So I want to go back and revisit my teeth line, the bottom of the teeth here. I'll revisit that a little bit, push that back, push that back. 
And I'm thinking about a box along that horseshoe now. And so I'm feeling where the canine is over and through here where it tells me that turn is going to be right in through here, feeling that over. Okay, and then I'm, that's where it really juts out the furthest. Then see how it comes back in that box? And then we kind of disappear somewhere gradually, slowly with the molar and then the bottom lip. So I'm probably pretty co close, but maybe a little bit low. I want to bring this up just probably a little bit, which would probably bring this up just a little. We can't tell because we don't know how thick his lip is, but I'm going to bring it up about right in through there. This shape, this kind of S curve here is really important. Here's the top here and it slinks around and then it curves in. So we've got this coming over like so, and then it curves around and then flattens and turns down as it continues to curve. That's a, that's a, that's a nice little tough drawing problem. Right in through, right in through there. All right, so let's get those teeth now here with the canine back up, feeling that line a little bit further to the other canine, in through here and up around. And we can start to see it go into the, it's the crown ends and starting to hit a little bit of gum later on, running through there, and then we'll just draw the shape of that uh, in the, um, the uh, canine. See how it's turned to the side? We get a little bit pointier. Right in through there, really wants to, almost like Dracula. That's where Dracula's uh, uh, fangs are at on the canine there. And then we get the premolar here curving in. See that? Then we get the other premolar being overlapped and underneath. You see that? This curving through and over premolar. And then we get our first molar, and then we start to really soften up back into the gum and in, in gingiva. Gingiva, and want to say gingivitis, but gingiva or just gum area. This this pox in and turns further, and so this will go up underneath. So it's really turning and flattening out about right there. That node and through that that's important. Continue to get this curve in this curvature working, and they just disappear. See how that just disappears now into the, the darkness, the cave of your mouth, if you will. So we have that nice curve coming through here. Really ends at the second premolar and goes back and just kind of flutters off into, into uh, the darker space. So we can kind of feel that rhythm of that dark coming through as it ends and starts to pick up the line of the, the lip in through there. So see how I'm implying the teeth, but I'm not drawing them so strong. And of course you could come in and you could get the, the shadow a little bit underneath, underneath there as well. Now I want to, before I go in deeper through there, before I break these apart, I want to get the form of the tongue. So here we have the side of the tongue. Remember now the tongue is lifted up and back into the palate a little bit. So it's lifted lifted up and into, so we're seeing underneath the bottom a little bit. So we have the side of the tongue, bottom mostly, a little bit of the side, not a whole lot, mostly just the bottom. Right in through here, that's where that darkness kind of ends. It gets a little bit darker pink in through there. The frenulum, right in through here, that, that strong split on the bottom where those, this, the tongue attaches to the muscles laying underneath is strongest. There's two, little, two or three little areas, but the frenulum, fren, frenulum is the strongest. About right in through here, okay? A little bit darker and split off a little bit. You can kind of see it and feel it. And then coming around these, these teeth in through here. And then you can see where about the, the medial incisor, right in through here, it gets, it ends and it curves down almost straight, but there's a little bit of a curve. And of course we get to the under teeth on the other side of the premolars and maybe a molar or two in there we can feel that underneath that there you get a sense of that real blocky form of the teeth that we looked at right through coming down angling back in that horseshoe as a as a again kind of a box right so that's important to um, to notice and I can tell how far off now my chin was when I drew that 
to really go back and, and make sure you get that right. I'm just going to leave it off, not to confuse me. And then if I confuse me, I'm, I'm damn sure going to confuse you. I don't want to do that. All right. So now I've got this, the tongue, see how the tongue feels, it's pointed up now. Now I'm not going to go into full value. That might take a while, but this is probably relatively dark enough. Now I'm going to get the line of the bottom teeth. So we have the bottom teeth are not quite as pretty as the top, meaning they're not kind of straight, and that's more natural. But I'm feeling here where the canine is. Do you feel where the canine, this little pointy triangular form here? And then we come over and we get more incisors that are turned through here. And you can see how one is uh, overlapped and over. So they're really, you have to really pay attention. That one's behind. Then we get this one more in front a little bit. And so they are, there is some dental interplay in through here that is challenging, more challenges. We get some in front, some behind, like cards that are stacked, playing cards, pieces of paper, one stacked in front of the other. And then you get the other canine popped in a little bit right in through here in this turn. So that's that's very interesting to see. So you get those stacked in quite quite differently. So I'll just allude to them just naturally. Now I'm gonna put on the bottom lip and I'm gonna finish out the bottom lip. Then we're gonna go back and kind of uh, revisit the upper lip and then put on the top, the teeth. I kind of like, I don't know if it's always, but I put on the top teeth a, a last because I want to be subtle about it and not emphasize them too much. You have to be really careful about overemphasizing. I want to, uh, hopefully I've made that clear. You don't want to overemphasize uh, teeth to the point that they become so stark. Whites of the eyes, of the eyeball, and whites of the teeth can be overdone and they look unnatural when in the hands of somebody a little bit less uh, experienced. And so we have to be careful not to make them too white, too light. As a matter of fact, if you get te teeth, teeth work done here in the States, dental work, they're going to have different colors of teeth to match what you have in your palette of, of colors for your teeth. If you're getting a filling or whatnot, that's pretty interesting. And you'll be surprised how, how really off-white they truly, they truly are, unless you brighten your teeth uh, for, for uh, whatever particular uh, reason. All right, so we have this coming down and through and around that lower, lower this under toe of the upper lip, labium superioris. Or us. All right, so the bottom lip, labium inferioris. I kind of just feel again where this top lip the center of it is, come down a little bit, feeling that right in through here, the center of the philtrum, and it turns in right in through there where it gets darkest. That's that undertow. Make that a little stronger line. Right in through these pencils get a little bit dull. Make that a little bit stronger line in through and up, like so. And then <clears throat> we'll cut underneath. And that generally will get us to the, also to the incisor change. Not always, because it's a little bit angled. I'll get to those in a moment. Bottom lip now. Arching up a little bit of a split. It's hard to see, just slightly. About right in through there, just barely. Where this is the tallest peak of it is. Center here down, center over. Balls out the heads just a little bit, then it turns down a little bit. Really turns down where the where the canine of the bottom is. Right, see there. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker. Right through there, <clears throat> and we'll cut underneath. See how that turns underneath that lip now. This will fill over a little bit. Now, I know we lost it a little bit in the camera. Make sure I can get that. Is that yeah, it's everything we've got. So that's a pretty close up here. And then around, this is gonna get a little wider as we come through. <clears throat> and then get that curve in. Now see how, see how I've got my first curve. Now that needs to come in and stretch more. So I wanna stretch him further. This is more of the skin out here. Wanna impress upon that over here. 
that becomes the skin. And this is going to turn in now, like so, to get that undercurrent in through here. There we go. That cuts in, and then now we can get into where it really connects up here. See how different that is? So it's really thinner right in through here and up and over right there. All this tucks really far over, especially now that we're seeing it open in through here, in much thinner loops, and comes on down. There we go. And plus, we get the shape better too. Right in through here. And this turns <clears throat> over like so. This is going to turn. This is going to turn. This is going to turn over, turn over, turn. Turn, turn, and then slightly get a little bit less tapered and turning straight, and then we can come over. And of course, we get to now the where the first canine is in the bottom, right about there. You can see that pointed down in this direction, turning, or, or, turning, turning again, and of course you can see how dark. I don't want to go too dark in there. It's going to take too long. All right, so we get that frenulum in through here and in the top of the teeth, a little stronger line, or top of the lip, I mean, there's the peak in between where it just slightly splits. It's really almost impossible to see. And through there a little bit, we'll make this a little bit darker. And then the, of course, from the canine is where the, the furrow will be, and that's much longer. And, it's look, and the chin would be way down, way down here, so I was way off. So see, we, you know, I, you, you've got to use your eyes, your perception, and I don't always get it right. Students ask me, how do you always get it right? I say, I don't. I just, the, one of the biggest difference for me is I have more exp experience than all my students, otherwise I wouldn't be teaching. Um, because I did not teach when I was in school, obviously. I was getting experience from my professors. But you, uh, the di big difference is I learned to make or correct mistakes a lot quickly. And so that's part of it. Now I'll just put in a little bit of this furrow, the straightening in here underneath a little bit so we can move on with it. And then lastly now I want to get the to the uh, teeth, the upper teeth here of what we see in our mouth, our mouth view, right? <clears throat> All right, so this takes a little bit of kind of just finessing. And so we see this, the center of the, the, um, the filter here is our center, right? It's our peak of the bottom, running through here. Then I look and see how the, the incisors, the center where they split, are, are pulled off a little bit. So here's, here's where they meet, the two incisors, the two medial, meaning the middle, I suppose, medial, in through here, and then around softly. So there's the shape of that softly in through here. Notice the shadow. It's kind of a triangular shadow. So we can start to hit that shadow. I just needed a place to start of the shadowing. And here I'm going to come around this, this uh, shorter side on the right. And see how this tissue loops a little bit more in through here and then loops up. You can see the prochelion now is a little bit more, it's a little bit more pronounced than I thought it was. Actually now looking at it, this turns over through here. This comes up a little bit. There we go. We have that as well. Always come over and erase off a little smudging. I always get underneath. See how you get underneath a little bit? You get that a little bit. You have to always be careful of that. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just unavoidable and you have to erase quite often. So now I'm getting the shadow of the teeth, this medial incisor here on the right. See this shadow coming over? And then I feel where it separates, it's ending. It goes back, wants to, wants to go back in the gum and over, getting its bottom. And I'm not gonna worry about the bottom so much now. Then I'm coming over to the, uh, the other incisor, the lateral, in through here, right? And then it, it really has a stronger line. And then the canine over here to the side, a little bit more in shadow, 
down and through and now it's starting to tuck. See how it tucks underneath? So here's the end of that incisor here, there. Here's the end of the a medial incisor right in through there. So this comes over like so. And we're going to pull in like that. And this is going to curve in a little bit. And so those teeth now where that tongue ends right in through here, those are actually that little dark. See that little dark there? That's where those back molars are. So they really, again, see how these teeth curve back into here and here, curve back into your head quite, quite remarkably. We're actually right over here drawing underneath that curve. And so we can start to pack these, the canine underneath with a line or two here. There's the canine. Just kind of a triangular sort of undercut shape here. And then overlapping the premolar. Just a line or two. And then it squares off and ends up over flatter over here. I'm just getting the subtle qualities of it in the shadow. Don't want to get too detailed. And then it's kind of hollows out to a tunneling of all the molars, premolar area. And you can see kind of a little harsh, harsher line over here where it gets overlapped again. And they come back over and in. So I want to be just very subtle with my line separation running through here. Because it's not that important to have to be careful. This is a stronger dark where they overlap. That that lip comes over here and then tucks and wraps. Now I can get clear with it over through here. It really wraps and it goes back up into the mouth and turns and curls back and just gets the mucousy cheek. It actually pulls against the buccinator in the back. And then we get this coming over like so. <clears throat> Okay, then we come down a little bit. Now we're going to go over here and get this. This is where the highlight of the tooth would be in through here. A little darker in through here and then come around where they meet. I'll put a little bit of a point of dark. I don't want to make it too dark. And I've got to come back and hit this edge where that incisor meets the other. It's a bit more pronounced there and over. A little change there, a little cut in there and just playing with it. But that's probably that's enough separation in terms of the teeth there. They don't seem to be too overbearing. I'm going to put a little bit more dark here just to make pop that out as a highlight, make that a little bit more simple. Now we have come over, we can start to come over and I'll, I'll hit these underneath cast shadows on the insides of here. Do you see that? I'm just going to run the shadows all over before I split them. Over here, I'm feeling that. Cast shadow being cast by the upper lip onto the teeth. You can see the photographic lights a little bit, or the highlights. Into the other incisor, probably there, coming down. And then back over, you can see how circular they are a little bit. They're cone-like structures, boxy, and also rounded. Back into the tooth, a little bit of the gum that separates right in through there. They're not that hard to draw, they're just a little bit tricky. And then coming over to the end of the incisor there, right, we have that. Coming in through to the gum, and then downward, right? That's where the shadow ends. I'm not going to get into all that later, or a little bit later. And then canine over, right, in through here. It was pretty close where we had it. In through here, darker. And all that's in shadow, curved up into just grouping the shadow between the gum and the cast shadow, and all that good stuff up there. This lip now under, see it, it comes up and over, overcuts here or undercuts depending upon your point of view running through there. There we go. Started to get get into a feel of that, <clears throat> and. Everything else now here in shadow, canine, and then after that, this it's a 
canine, this becomes the premolar here. Then after that, I'm just gonna let it fall away, fade a little bit in there, not make it as dominant as you wanna think. Simplify all those teeth into that mouth a little bit. As a matter of fact, in through here, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot more. I might darken in where the frenulum is a little bit. See how it's kind of triangular, that shadow? That's enough in mind. We're kind of doing a half value. The values are accurate, but they're all stepped up about five, three or four steps lighter, at least, overall. But you can do that in the studies and keep your values lighter for just time's sake. All right, so <clears throat> continuing on now, so I'm gonna pick up the canine tooth Right into here, darken in where you see a little bit of gum and separation to the first premolar in through here. And I'm just gonna leave a little stronger line where the premolar is and leave it. Kind of put these back in shadow so they just fade away. I don't wanna make an issue of those teeth. I wanna be uh, softer and gentler, even the photo. Let them, let them just slightly get the impression of what's, of what's going there. So now I'm going to uh, track back to the, the uh, incisor here where it separates, right in through there. This cuts underneath. So this tooth goes back this way. This tooth goes back that way. Keep that in mind. This has a little bit of a ridging in through there and down through, like so. Then we're going to come over. This cuts under, not over, but under. And we get this separation. Really lay off the line then hit the line here right in through there. That's an important little area to get that separation. Then it gets chiseled over, it disappears, gets chiseled over, then it's slightly undercut. Undercut as it's turning across, up and over to the other tooth. And see how there's just slightly crooked? Kind of like mine, mine are like that. They come together just a little bit. Nobody's perfect. At least not mine are, unless you want to pay for Lots of perfection. See how these are ridged? So you can know they're ridged. The teeth are kind of like ridges. And you can tell by the lighting it's not just even across. Have that. <clears throat> and so we get that tooth and we come down for that negative space. Get that separation just a little bit. And then arch back this way and over and then come back up and you can see it hits the canine here it wants to curve downward nice and sloped like so and then back up into the gum into the, the beginning of the root would be the socket almost under underneath there turning turning shadow <clears throat> and then the canine here now so this gets a little darker K9 here and up, we get that curve, an angle, back up. It's a little bit thicker and over. And there we get that K9 shape back up into the gum as it disappears underneath the lip. Very strong triangular little form in between there. And also here, but I'm gonna let these just fade right in through there. So that might, I might call that a day in terms of that some artists might keep going premolar curve underneath and you're, and you're on your way. More molars and you just really get to the back uh, through here as well. Might put just a dark mark just to push it back. So there we are. I think we're, we're close to that. I want to tighten this up a little bit. This top of the, the lip as it comes across. You're constantly in a state of should I go across it or should I contour it? And you can do a little bit of both as well until you get a look you want through an arch and then this curves again pretty deeply over we get the finishing kind of finishing feel of that sketch and you can feel this contouring over strongly how that strongly curves just feeling it across that contouring is a feeling that your brain and your hand and your eye are all working together this flattens out a little bit further and you start to get that sort of undercut feeling that we want with those teeth 
And I'm gonna undercut this a little bit stronger here and then back and through. <clears throat> Those top of the teeth, like so. Just pick up their, their feeling a little bit and not get so detailed. Now, if you're doing a photographic representational thing where you're spending eons of hours, you're gonna pick apart more of this. It's not the purpose. And then a little bit of contour here. And there we go. All right, probably don't even put any white down, but I might just on one or two, you know, I might pick the this area as my focal point and put a little bit of, little bit of into here, a little whitening here, maybe along this incisor here. We've got it just a touch. Do there not a whole lot, and maybe one more here just to pull it out. Okay, all right. So there we go. All right. So that it's a pretty tricky little little um, little study. Really fun, actually. Quite quite a little bit of fun. Um, and we'll go on now to to our next one. All right. So now we have a. Um, uh, a young one here, right? Baby's lips. So they can be more pronounced in the prokelion. And we're going to do two more studies with uh, filling out uh, baby form here, uh, lips, and show you how a little bit different in the front area with this more pronounced, pronounced area in the front, the prokelion, which um, is supposed to, according to my research, help in suckling young infants to suckle uh, milk, I would assume, obviously. So <clears throat> as we move now to the drawing part of it, so this is on a, we're slightly below, just barely, but the head is tilted, so we get this tilt of where the lip will be. And if we're gonna kind of feel out a ball with this lip form, we might feel it in this way, or this manner, like so. So we have that, and we're gonna also, have to make sure that we manage the entire tilt of it, right? So that's kind of the feeling of the ball. The ball really never changes, doesn't it? So that's pretty nice. But we're going to have to manage the tilt of it. So we're tilted quite a bit in this direction. So we're tilted up in through here, right? Over and through here. And so that turns everything. It's kind of where, uh, not necessarily the chin, but the furrowing could be like so. Um, we'll put the nose, the bottom of the nose, just in here across that, that structure. So we'll feel that across here. Just a line now for the, for the bottom of the nose, and then we can start to feel where the, 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 the hub of the greater alar cartilage would be, and then the, slightly the nostril on the left side, and then on the right side would be over in through here a little bit more and over and so we can kind of just begin to place that nose onto uh, that structure. So we've got this angle especially right in through here is especially this one I'm drawing right in here is especially important because we're moving across right that ball and that's going to be the same thing for the filter. Now the filter coming down the distance between here between the, the septal part the septum of the nose right in through here is that greater alar tissue comes into the septum and of course it goes over moves over to the nostril and that the, the the opening of the nostril would be something like that the crust and through here etc um we get now the <clears throat> excuse me the uh i'm going to find out the distance between the filtrum now and the in this septal part of the nose right in through here so probably pushing it i'm going to push it to about right in through here just kind of mark that line where I want it to be. And then the filtrum comes down off the septum here. We see that ridging through and around and slightly curving in through here like so. And then the same thing on the other side <clears throat> in our position through here, kind of overlapped. Here's the center running through here and coming in. And then it gets a little bit even more curved as it's gonna, gonna feel even kind of more bulbous. So there's a kind of an indention and a really curving and kind of around. And you can see from the shadow how that does. It's really ridged in through here. See how it bites in, it divots in. 
to the shadow and then it wants to curve out this gets this upper ridge that comes up on this way and then downward and up on in as well and this comes over so we get a real strong kind of philtrum that's even pretty sausagey uh, in its conception too uh, as well right in through right in through here is pretty nice right really really sausage and of course this is cast shadow back on over and through here and over around the nostril fill that in just a little bit for now over through that and this really cascades you can feel that cascading kind of over and through here <clears throat> in the middle of it and then downward and you get that going pretty pretty well all right so we have that we have this pulled around and we find the center of our form in through here, the filter in through here. Let me finish this out, actually. This is going to curve even further. Get a little bit darker as it really overlaps into that one. It's really, filter is really, really arched. Very much so. Okay, we have the orbicularis orus rhythm coming down through here like so, right, and pulling around. You can see it over here a little bit like so. Then we're going to get into uh, now the structure of the lip a little bit. So we're going to feel the prokelion really pronounced, really arched. See this curvature here? In through here where it pulls up like a strong M shape coming above the prokelion and the vermilion line, kind of a white line again right in through here this turns around and you get this coming up and over like so get this dig uh, delving in like this and we're going to start to feel the structure here's the full middle but then the prokelion is over here of the of the head of it right in through here coming down do you see that right where it breaks about right in through there very pronounced and over like so. See how much softer this is up here. This is going to run around and come over and get real curved. See how that curves up? Real curved. And stay that way. And then we're going to come down the prokelion. And this, this, this whole area, because of the poochiness of the, of the baby, wants to overturn. Remember how this kind of underturned? Now this one wants to overturn. See how it's doing this and this and this. It's really pushing underneath. So let's get this arched here and then it ends pretty early. Right in through there. Look how far it ends. And it ends down a little bit lower than the prokelion running through there. About right there. Look how low that is. It's pretty low. And it keeps on going into about right there. And then we get to the ending, true ending, get into the node a little bit, don't we? Right in through there. So we get a little bit of shadow here, right? Like so, and then arching over like so to get that, that uh, pocketing of the node around. You see how we're still feeling around that ball too as well. Let's put on the other side. I want to just straighten this out for now. The lower part of the labium superioris just for now. And then we'll come back over and we'll feel this rod over and through, right? And where we need to be for the other node. Look how short it is. About where the nostril ends to about here. We'll put it on there and say we need to end up, kind of need to end up there, don't we? So we need to end up there. So that's going to give us, and we can see where the middle now, the prokelion truly is pushed over to about right there. I'll kind of mark it. Pushed over. You see how this wraps and curls, curls and wraps around. This comes over this way, like so. Then we come over and wrap, and then right there is where it's ending. And so we get this secondary lip triangular sausage arrow air area starting to overlap now and then kind of blending into that dark a little bit better to give us that and it's cast shadow on the, the inferiors underneath right in through right in through there. All right, let's come back over here now. So we're see how it's tilted quite a bit, tilted. 
coming up in through here. So we've got that. Then we're over. A little bit darker in through here, darker. Darker in through here to give this that no feel. Look how it looks, how different it looks from the adult adult lips and through here. So running through here, this is a little bit stronger. This this we really have to be careful to make sure that this is a real rounded, see this is sausage -y coming around to get that to work too. That's what really makes that baby, the filtrum is so sausage -y too. The adult's not as much running through there. That works pretty well. This comes back in. This is where it really divots too inside there and around for the cast cast shadow coming back now over one of these days i'll get there and through here this this to this the upper part of the m of the prokelion then we're pretty much in a free fall aren't we it lingers a little bit over and then it just free falls downward look at that but then we get the, the, the baby so chubby we get this movement here. See how it undercuts in just a little bit like so to bring that sauce. So there's a little bit of extra gathering here. Can you see it? And so I'll put a little dark there where that gathers and then we get a little extra, ga extra gathering here like so. Just links a little bit pushed over to the front lip so it's not quite even. It's a little bit bulbous here then we get that then we get this kind of softening value as it curls over look at that that really gives us that poochy quality especially since this wants to come in this little extra that we see because it's so chubby and through there really young lots of fat baby fat through here this turtles under there we go so we can kind of contour this a little bit further to here and to here, downward. This wants to curl downward. Around, really curl that around, probably more than I have it. Curl that, curl that. Okay, we're still on the top lip here. More separation, the prokelion. And through here, and then this wants to cut in, and then we really get into the node early because of the, the Pucker pulled in lip cheek and then down and around here, and this is all makes that even even poochier. Running through, running through there. Okay, so we have that. Let's finish up over here with the top in through here, and we've got this coming over. <clears throat> And now we've got this pulled in, pulled in through here. And then to end this out from the prokelion ending, I'm probably a little thicker, but I don't mind it. Run it through here and it really starts to thin. I'm probably not, I'm probably okay. So it's undercut a little, then it ends, and this folds really well over it, really overlaps it, and this tucks in about right there. Makes a little bit more of a dark and then this extra dark you're getting on the bottom is cast shadow onto the skin and also to the lower lip. And through here. Long furrowing over to the um, the other side over here to the to the node. This cast shadow a little bit stronger. Hard edged. This is going to turn so <clears throat> now bottom lip so we've got the mouth is not open it's just cast shadow on this bottom lip and this bottom lip looks a little bit chapped to me it looks a little bit dry unfortunately poor poor guy so this curves around here bottom lip but we want to find that center about right there here we go We want to find the center of that bottom lip right in through here 
Perkelion. This could be divided a little bit further in mine. <clears throat> Wait for me to get yours exact. Get mine a little bit better. There we go. Just make an issue out of that that coming together and that coming together. It's really important. I do that a little stronger together. There we go. Center of the bottom lip about right in through here, turning down and ending about right through there. Some cast shadow in a real strong red line. So it tells me that wide of that lip is probably chap. This all is very sausagey, isn't it? Turning, 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 turning in a little bit. So we get this coming in, and then we get a little bit of, of narrowing and straightening about right here. Now we run it through there and over. We don't get as much over here because of the perspective. And then about right here, we start to dive in to the ending of the turning of the lip right about in through there. In this bottom, we get a little bit stronger value. Kind of ridging of the bottom in through there across like so. This wants to pull on around, pull on around like a tube. That's why I call them sausages and not pillows. Here's more like little tubes. <coughs> and then you see how there's not much. Well, let me finish it out here first before I get to that. There's not much, though, the furrow yet of the skull, of the chin. So this flattens out a little bit through here. And it starts to tuck in about right there where it gets darker. So it's actually and you get a lot of some shadow skin into there. And this really curls over more about right there, actually. There we go. This is kind of an under tuck, like so. That's better. There we go. And around. That this kind of curls up underneath. There we go, like so. <clears throat> See how there's a shadow here, right in through here. That's really curving, curving, curving over, pretty strongly still. And then to get back to this problem now, over here on the little shelf here on the inside, uh, the down part of here, notice how the furrow of the chin, there's not much, there's not much straightening, it's all pretty much rounded. So we come down here where the, where the uh, node area is and through here, take this rhythm on, this line, and then we come over here and this how really round, it's almost like a ball, a little extra ball sticking out and this gets just this little thing, like so. A bit more contour so you can see that. And then uh, this really turns, doesn't it? Turns, turns, turns over. And then we get this. This cheek will go down a little bit further. So we get this kind of puckering up to the of everything in through here. We get that coming through. And we can put in a little bit of this through here. This cheek over here, and then we're kind of on, on our way. All right, so there we go. Let's move on to one last one. We'll do one more baby, baby lip over here in a more challenging kind of position, I think. Be fun to see. Okay, let's go on to that. All right, last one. We got one more little youngster to do, adorable. Notice that we our point of view is way down below. So the head is more foreshort and sitting down flat, and so we're in front, but the head is um, certainly tilted way back towards us, probably, probably leaning and resting uh, as well. So I think that's a good uh, viewpoint for us to take a look at what's really going on with the, the, the propelion of a child in that middle section it's almost like a big round ball or a tear duct that's supposed to help and look how upturned the the uh, labium um, uh, superioris is on the on the sides there are three parts that help in puckering and suckling um, 
a milk from the mother, a nipple type structure, either by bottle or by the mother's uh, breast for sure. Um, and I think that is a nice uh, kind of thing to see here to give us some more of that lip structure. So let's work with that now. So our last one here, you're almost there. So we'll kind of get the feeling of the ball um, that uh, I think is, is relevant, at least for me, but uh, sometimes I just imagine it or other times I draw it isn't here, but, but I think for instructional purposes, it's, I think it's pretty important diagramming. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now, <clears throat> the center here, we're tilted, right? So we're coming across that ball like this a little bit. And we're going to, I'm going to put the, the nose right, kind of slightly on the ball profile here and here, because you see the angle, right? You see how it's tilted here? And then the uh, nostril comes up, nostril comes up here a little bit on that tilt. It's important to get that. And then what really happens with all this is it just comes out like sort of a triangular, triangular form, mushroomy kind of form. And through here, the, the um, front part of the nose, and through here, and of course the septum down and through. And I'm kind of kind of kind of mark the septum a little bit. The width of it here, underneath a little bit as it arches. See how it really arches over just to get a feel for that. Here and probably in through in through there a little so we can get underneath that that nose a little bit where the philtrum kind of kind of starts into here. And what I really see is is the lips don't get the the total width of the lips don't really get wider than the, the, the nose does it or it doesn't. All right, so we have now the um, the philtrum to work with now for sure, certainly. And we'll feel that center part of it out. And kind of feel the distance between this undercutting of the of the ball, the maxilla parts here, and coming down orbicularis oris over the top of that a little bit. It's not where the eyeball is, it's much greater down below where the nostril is coming across that ball a little bit further. So we can feel that, we can feel that kind of coming down. And the first thing again, I'll feel the end of the upper lips, how V-shaped tilted they are here and here. Okay, we have that kind of curving around. So I feel that, feel the philtrum coming through, curve here and curve around of the philtrum here and here. So we have that to there, have that to there. And we're gonna feel how deep child's philtrum is in the beginning. This generally changes, but look how the top really kind of bulges together and this goes off. And the other side, see how they feel, how they, they really come together. Really take on this kind of septal, septum of the nose here and through here a little bit. We'll get that shading, that value down a little bit further, kind of like that. Okay, and over like so, and around, and there we go, like that, and we're going to come through, now they're really squeezed together, aren't they? They kind of almost do that up here, but on oh, the other side over here, but they squeeze together, and then they kind of pillow out, like so, they split out, like this, kind of a U-shape curl around and then up. And it ends before we get to the lip. The chain, the vermilion change a little bit. Then it kind of U-shapes out like so, doesn't it? Over here, this kind of wants to turn lightly and subtly over. And all this tends to turn over. So this turns back in, look at that. Like another teardrop on top of a teardrop shape. It's like two of them. This really furrows in. And then cascades, these are all cascading down, down. Look at that filter, isn't that amazing? This really cascades around, tube, sausagey. And this bellows in now to this little cavity. Right in through there, we put a little shadow on it. To that little cavity, right in through there, it makes the, the soft part of the filter. And they kind of come together, but they, they keep, a, keep a little bit of of a, a bucket or a, a divot or a hole 
where it gets slightly a little bit darker, but it's but it's subtle because it's a simple transition, but it's a ball. That's that's a better word, ball around. And this kind of comes around now, softens, softens, softens. Comes around now, softens through here. Mm-hmm. And then around right and through. Like so, and this comes over, and this is around, and this undercuts, it undercuts a little bit, and now we fall gracefully across that ball, that turn of that philtrum, across that ball, undercutting there, and see so we get to that nostril here, and this little bit lighter side over here, we can smooth it out a little bit later, but this starts to cut over. Get that nostril to the to the orbicularis oris and then around way around that ball that's why that ball is so important ball and horseshoe will never lie to you it will tell you what's going on with your forms so this is probably a little bit even, even uh, this line's a little harsh with respect to the filter so I'll soften that just a little for now this one's a little bit stronger because of the the shading of the lighting situation. What is the light situation? It looks like it's where we are, and uh, the camera is set up to flash where kind of our eyes are at, or our forehead would be on that child. So it's actually front lit, not to the side, but actually to the front. So we are in a way kind of the kind of the light source, ironically as well. So I just make a stronger line. I'm not going to get into the nostril more than that. Okay, so now we've got a uh, this little ridging now from the end of the philtrum up and around and a little bit more skin before we get to the vermilion line, which running through here. See how it kind of does this? This is the vermilion area and then it does this. Really cups, curls over the prochelion, really pronounce that V shape. Females and babies can have a really strong natural v-shape everybody could have a strong perkelly on m shape or v-shape with a lipstick if we want i could if i wanted to probably want to all right okay so now we can cook cook a little bit here move a little bit quicker contouring around contouring this is not this is the filtrum the little white white space white line and then we have the vermilion line here now let's start working on the overall gesture of it. let's really get moving so we can come over here and see it's arched and then we can come crashing down. Remember, we, we don't want to go past the nostril much, maybe just a little bit on this side. So I'm going to bring this line down to show you here. I'm going to show you here and show you what I'm talking about. Arches way up here, yeah, and then over, coming on down, curving along the ball, but then down on the ball, in through here and over to about right there where we get to the end. It curls in kind of like the crust of the nostrils. It curls in like this. And here's the node about right there. So just maybe slightly past, but not by a whole lot. Don't get that nose, the lips too wide out in this, in this, in this viewpoint. So that turns back in here. And this turns, you can see where the value is. This turns over like so. That's why contour lines are so interesting and important. Now we can feel this to this and this and over here. So we curve over or you can find a straight line and we're gonna to get to probably through a curve right about here. Now the, now the mouth's open just slightly, just in rest by gravity maybe pulling it down. But here's where we're feeling over in through here. So right in through here is the node or ending of the overlap of the two lips together here, right? We'll pull this down. And this will lap over, lap over, lap over like so. Okay, so we've got that. Now we can come over and get this shape here up, right, as we have it. Okay. And coming over from this wide area and just like a roller coaster, doesn't it? Just, whoa, if you're a micro, that's a roller coaster. And then coming down and through and curling back over. We get that sensation of that node. And this is wanting to curl this way. 
down through because of that that light we can tell what's going on with that value isn't it amazing so we have that this curls over through we'll get that a little bit stronger now let's get that middle section of Prokelion this teardrop look how look how much that's teardropping now the white line kind of ends up higher right so we get to the vermilion line make that a little bit stronger so you can see that up and through here Vermilion is, is a type of red shade, kind of peakish red. That's what we really call it. And that's where those blood, the skin changes on the lips. It becomes thinner. And the capillaries, over one million uh, uh, nerve, uh, nerve endings and capillary, blood capillaries are in there. I think it's one million nerve endings, endings, but there are tons of blood capillaries. So we get that reddish color, especially more in Caucasian. There we go. Through there, and we get that. Then we come down, and let's get that teardrop shape really quickly. So it comes in through here, the prokelion. And see how it really hangs down. It gets here, it hangs. It's almost like um, some kind of insect nest or bulb. It's really interesting. I'm not sure how to describe it. Teardrop, I guess, is good. Right in through here, this curls around. It's really bulbous. In through here, and see how it curls, and then it gets a little bit more of a shape here. So it's fatty off of through here, really, really sausagey. So it's puckered in and this comes together here. And then the second part on the other side is over here. This overlap, this gets overlapped so much. It's so wide and see these contour lines as they come over. Con it's so clear. Look at that. And they keep on turning, keep on turning over. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? So we get that. And you can tell it's a baby's mouth once you start to see these shapes come together. It's pretty obvious because human beings, this does not, it gets straightened out. We lose that suckling of the, of the, uh, the breast type situation that we've been designed, nipple or bottle, however it happens with feeding a child. But that's genetically, I think, uh, evolutionarily developed so we can have that. Then we come underneath here like so <clears throat> pull that in and around so we get this a little bit rounder in through here and this light's really strong so we get that that's why I chose this photograph I did not make the photograph I just chose it just so we can see the story of what's going on with that, how dominant that is. And we come over here now, get this around. <clears throat> how, how wonderfully round this is. We get a little bit of light here, across that. That's going to pull. Now we're pulling on this surface and see how this starts to droop. Look at all this space. Now in between as this overlaps and through here, this wants to curl up underneath and through here and then it starts to touch and overlap the lower lip. Look at that. It's so dominant. And then come over and end up here, doesn't it? Pretty amazing. This gets a tone for now. And then this can get a tone here just to finish this off. There's so many creases I won't get into all that detail, but this is gonna come over. We've got that. That lighting situation, you can tell how well that's under lit. <clears throat> All right, so this comes up and around. So the center part right through there. I'm going to erase out part of that a little bit. I need to get that back. Take my Japanese mono eraser. Thank you, Japan. And look at that strong crease right there and over. That's pretty powerful. Through here. I want to keep that coming up. This strong shape. All right, let's get the other side. Here's where they touch here. So that's kind of where I'm coming across. Actually, a little bit lower. I've got this hanging down nice and low. It's okay. This curls up here on the other side. You see that? And then there's another curl up in here, and then it starts to get overlapped actually by the lower lip, even. 
It's amazing how fat these lips are. This comes up over, and then it kind of disappears through all this node. The end of through this turn, this turning up underneath, like so, as so that turns, and all these crashing curves and undertonings are pretty amazing. So we have that. Make that a little bit harder edged. Keep that that line there. Then this look at the contouring so we get the contouring how this turns, 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 turns towards us and really comes down. It's so complex. And then kind of the glossy glossiness of the lips. We get that turning underneath. Like so. And then where they crash together, we get that crease right through here. Here we go. And through here. Okay, so now we can start to hit the finish line of the mouth here, the lower lip, labium inferioris. Through here, I'll go a little darker. All right, so let's feel that across. Kind of a straight line will tell us we're on the right track here, pretty good. So this curls up, right? Then comes comes in a little bit. There's the split. You see the split about right here in the middle, roughly? Right there, that little seam, that little crease. So we've got a classic three, two. Three on top, two on the bottom. So we see that it's not very wide as we're getting the perspective underneath the lip. And we see that furrowing where it straights a little bit, where it gets flatter as it turns underneath. Now it's turned towards us in through here and then a little down with the curve like so and we're crashing in these will come together as it ends it creases it turns underneath where the skin ends we get that harder line right in through there a little harsher line right through there through there and then these want to turn over And then come through like so as we come over. A little bit of a soft transition, isn't it? Right in through here. And then we get a little bit now, this hubbing out. It's actually right, sorry, just because you're about right here. A little, bit, a little bit pushed over for me. Here, a little bit more of a curve. We come over and down, it crashes down just a little bit. Okay. So that this creases in and curves the opposite way. That's why this got a little dark line there. This creases out. It's a little cleave in there. This is going to come over to here and find its way over softly and gently. This over turn into here. This darker line where they come together, like so. It flattens out. <clears throat> These are really fun to draw. And over, and this is going to come over a little bit. Bulge out, and this can come down together in where they touch. This is actually overlapping the top now. And the other one is op just the opposite. It's pretty amazing. So this overlaps here, and this one overlaps like so. The top overlaps the bottom, so you get a little bit of opposite of that, which is pretty wild. Quite wild and through here. Dip this in a little bit, and we've got this inside here there's a lip like so pretty dark in there and kind of give it a little bit of change in value just to show that turn it into itself and kind of fade the lip into the dark a little bit keep a little stronger line there just to, to see how it soft gets a little softer at the edge so it fades in there nicely then we're not done. We've got this softness around, 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 around and through here, and then, then over, overlapping. I'll curl it a little bit so you can see that. A little darker into here. And then we're coming up, and you can see the bottom now. This area of the lip 
we're going to finish up now with this little cleaving here. You see, that's kind of like an under furrowing or under kind of a filter on top, isn't it? Just a little bit. Darker and see there. Whoops, somebody dropped something above me. We have studios above us. Drawing and painting studios, sometimes they get they clang and bang stuff. <clears throat> Through here. All right, so let's get this, let's analyze this area. We're almost done. So a little feeling of this lower lip here turning in through and up. Do you see that? And it comes over and it cleaves a little bit, which is pretty interesting thing going on here. This gets a little stronger edged. Up. Up and through there. <clears throat> and around. It's a little harder edged, but not, not too hard. A little bit harder. Pick that up. And then around. This is going to be softer and darker. Pick that through. <clears throat> kind of a hub in through here, the labium inferiorisaurus, and through here is going to hub through here, and then down through, and then over. This and then in like so, almost there. And we feel this kind of structure here outwards. One more pooching here, and this kind of center sort of cleaving. It's like a couple of ridges. It does this here. I'm trying to just getting the feel for the shadow part of it. Is it undercuts here? and it undercuts there. And we're left with sort of this overturn here. Undercut there. And we're left with an overturn here. Very curious in the chin area for this age. And this is kind of a bulbous form, right? You see that? It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing little area. And then this kind of wants to do this. Overturn, overturn, overturn. And we'll get this shadow in through here a little bit, this more shadow play. <clears throat> like so. Fascinating little little sub area of the lower lower lip into the chin, this gathering of skin. <clears throat> It's like a second filtrum. Pretty interesting. That'll come together there and then we'll kind of come under here. And we'll curl this around, curl this around. Roll this around, really curl. Everything's kind of sausagey. Very much so. And we're just about there. This kind of juts out this way, more shadow. I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, darker tone just in some areas underneath, just to get that mouth to separate here, just to show that. Here, this overlaps. Here, and this really curls into there and touches. Go a little darker in that mouth area. Might have been a little bit long in that shape, but I got the got the angle. It's okay. Let's see there where they touch. They, basically, they touch because the front over front of the prokeleon overlaps. And then here too as well. Isn't that amazing? You get that fold. You get another rhythmic fold there. It's pretty amazing. Well, that comes over. And you get that, and then kind of where they touch and almost glue together, kind of like the, the female one we did earlier. And that's probably enough. Maybe just a little dark here. 
20 seconds, I'll be done. There, and in through here. And down. And over and we're out. And there we go. All right. You guys take it easy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.